Partnership for Air Transportation Noise and Emissions Reduction, an FAA, NASA, Transport Canada Sponsored Center of Excellence. Sonic Boom and Subsonic Aircraft Noise Outdoor Simulation Design Study. Aircraft impacts on local and regional air sonic boom and subsonic aircraft noise outdoor simulation design study. Executive summary. The objective of this project was to determine if it is possible to construct a simulation device that can generate sonic boom noise and subsonic aircraft noise for an individual house or a part of a house. Such a device would be very useful for the subjective testing of individuals to determine their annoyance thresholds to sonic boom and aviation noise. It was shown that such a simulator likely can be constructed to meet every design goal, but it will not be expensive. Probably will be expensive. It was shown that one particular technology for low frequency sound generation, the rotary subwoofer, will not meet several requirements needed for such a simulator. It is recommended that a low-cost, small-scale simulator be constructed using electrodynamic loudspeaker components, specially constructed for the purpose. This small-scale simulator could be used to assess whether the system components can meet the strict volume, velocity, and impulse response requirements, and thus provide an experimental basis for the construction of a more expensive full-scale simulator. The most challenging aspect of any sonic boom or subsonic aircraft noise simulator would be the need for portability. We know such a simulator can be built indoors at a fixed position as has been done at NASA Langley Research Center. Taking it on the road. Taking it on the road. High power sound reinforcement systems have been developed to a very sophisticated level for live concerts and outdoor venues like sports stadiums or festivals. The audience expectations for both fidelity and sound level for contemporary Popular music concerts are demanding and require electrical power inputs on the order of several hundred kilowatts. The frequency bandwidth for which systems for such systems is dictated by the range of the human voice, musical instruments, and by the frequency response and dynamic range of human hearing. ATK Audio Tech indicated that a system could be built on one or perhaps two semi-tractor trailers. In the case for two trailers, the first trailer would include all the electrodynamic drivers and the second trailer would include all the control systems, amplifiers, signal conditioning, and power generation. ATK indicated that bringing the power generation with you would be the most expedient approach since adequate power would rarely be available where you wanted to stimulate the sonic boom or subsonic aircraft noise. They noted that they have worked with nearly silent electrical power generators before. They were available on the open market, and the sound from these generators would not impact the perception of the synthesized sonic boom or subsonic aircraft noise. The steel work required for holding up the subwoofer drivers for use in a sonifying a house could be the most challenging part of the system. The counterweight system on one side of a trailer likely would be needed to balance the subwoofer drivers, weighing down the business side of the outdoor simulator. An alternative would be expandable anchor legs for the trailer that would keep it from rolling on its side when the loudspeakers were deployed. Now I know in some of these large uh, 
booms that people have heard around the country also are accompanied with flashes. And a company has set up uh, something that does do that. Now here they go on to say explosive charges and compressed gas do seem to have a role regarding understanding the transmission of sound from outdoors to indoors. However, sound transmission is an application where precise time signature control is not a high priority. Further, using explosive charges and or compressed gas around human subjects seems to be a non-starter if one wants to receive institutional review board approval. Well, I bet you that they figured out a way to do it because people are seeing flashes in the sky also when this stuff is occurring. So here you can see where they've done an explosion. This one here, methane, nitrogen, and oxygen gas cylinders. There's your, you know, your control, your control table to make the explosion. Here you got your detonator. So I'm sure they figured out a way to to get this done with some sort of charges along with the uh, the other idea with the uh, subwoofers that are so big and so loud attached to a tractor trailer Okay, so a while back, I found this guy, he made a map. This is at Above Top Secret. Somebody did this post. And, uh, you know, so he mapped out where a lot of these noises are happening. And over here, you see the Wisconsin one. And you can see it's like in a straight line. And even he says this. It's as though something is traveling. This is a screenshot of how far I got on this map so far. Notice how the majority of the events are lining up as though something were traveling down that line. Well, sure. It's a double tractor trailer traveling down that line, boy. get on to the next man because this government they just keep going and going and going and we're all going to get left behind if we're going to sit here and do silly things like it's the aliens no as much as I, I believe in that stuff and I do of course myself I don't believe them to be aliens I believe that that's been resolved thousands of years ago just read your bible and uh that's it Case solved, let's get on to the next.